Hey, this is Math 8, Unit 7, Lesson 2, Multiplying Powers of 10. So we're going to be just kind of exploring some patterns with exponents today, and we multiply powers of 10 to see what happens here. And so we have a little picture to start off with here, and it says that Claire said she sees 100, Tyler says he sees 1, and May says she sees 1 and 100th. Do you, who do you agree with? And so when you take a look at that picture, what is it that you see when you look at that picture there? You might notice you have you know little squares in here and if you count them up you end up having you know a length of 10 over here it has a height definitely of 10 over there okay so you could see how tyler might say there's just one large group that would be okay and may saying that there's you know she sees one out of a hundred or claire saying a hundred that's probably each little tiny square there that makes sense and May, doing a fractional part, this is like one piece out of all the 100 there. That makes sense as well. So there's probably a reason for why you might say anyway, agree with either one of those as an idea here. But they all are very different numbers, aren't they? So they relate to one another because they're powers of 10. And let's take a look at how this kind of plays out in our next activity. Picture a power of 10 is what it's called here. It says in the diagram, the medium rectangle is made up of 10 small squares. Okay, so there's 10 small squares in here, and the large square is made up of 10 medium rectangles. So every time we go there, it's like we're multiplying by 10, aren't we? And over here, we're, we're multiplying by 10 every time we move to the left there, so to speak. So how can we, first of all, represent the large square as a power of 10? Okay, so when we look at this square here, how we represent that as, as a power of 10? Remember, the power means that I'm multiplying it by itself a certain number of times. So, knowing that I have 10 across and 10 vertically there, I do have a total of 100 little squares inside of there. But really what I'm doing is I'm taking this first square, right, and I'm multiplying it by 10, and then multiplying it by 10 again, aren't I? To go from the little one there. So I'm taking it by, multiplying it by 10 to the first power, times 10 to the uh, first power again. So I'm doing that twice. So what I end up with is I end up with 10 to the second power because the rule that we're working with today is gonna be this, that when I take a number like 10 to the n power times 10 to the m power, I can take those exponents because they have the same base and I can actually add them up together, 10 to the n plus m. So this is the rule that we're working with today in this lesson, okay? And we're gonna see this play out quite a bit. So what's happening to go from here to here is times 10 and then times 10 again. So that happens twice to 10 to the second power, which again is the same as 100. If each small square represents 10 to the second, then what does the medium rectangle represent and the large square? Well, again, I'm going from the little one, which it says is 10 to the second power, and I'm going to go to the medium one, and then I'll go to the large one. And every time I go to one more, I'm multiplying it by, what do we say? Times 10. And we call it 10 to the first. So to go to the medium one, it's 10 to the second times 10 to the first, which is the same as 10 to the 2 plus 1, which I could write as 10 to the third. With me so far? Now that I'm at there, 10 to the third, if I'm gonna to go to the large one, I'll take that value and multiply it again by 10 to the first. So that becomes 10 to the three plus one, which is gonna be 10 to the fourth. All right, so the medium one is gonna be 10 to the third, and the large one is gonna be 10 to the fourth if I'm starting at that spot. All right, let's take a look at here. If the medium rectangle represents 10 to the fifth, then what does the large square and the small square represent? Okay, so we have that one there, and we have this one over here is the big one. Now we said before that to go from the medium to that one is multiplying by 10, right? This is times 10. So let's take a look at this one right here real quick. To go from the medium to the big one, I'm gonna take the 10 to the fifth, and I'm gonna multiply it by another 10. Again, that number 10 is 10 to the first power, so that's the same as 10 to the five plus one. So I have 10 to the sixth power when I'm talking about the large square. But think about this. 
it was going to be multiplying to go that way times 10, but they wanna know what about if I go to the small square? Well, just like we said before, if it's multiplication to go one direction, then it would be division to go the other direction, right, in a sense. So just as we did a 10 uh, to the n times 10 to the m equals 10 to the n plus m, I can also do a 10 to the n um, divided by 10 to the m equals a 10 to the n minus m, so to speak, okay? So here, we're gonna do 10 to the fifth, which is where I started, and I'm going to divide that by 10 to the first power, because I'm dividing it by 10. So what do we see happening here? It's 10 to the five minus one power, which becomes 10 to the fourth. So when I'm multiplying by 10, then I'm with the same base, I'm gonna combine the exponents. When I'm dividing with the same base, it's like subtracting the exponents. So we end up with 10 to the fourth to go to the smaller one, okay? If the large one represents 10 to the 100th power, so my starting point is 10 to the 100th power, then what does the medium one represent? Let's start with that one. Again, we're going down this way to the medium and going to make it smaller means that we're gonna be looking at dividing by 10. So this is like doing 10 to the 100th power divided by <laughs> 10 to the first power, which is 10 to the 100 minus one power, which would be 10 to the 99th. Okay, so that's where I'm at so far. But now let's do this 10 to the 99th and let's do it one more time to get down to the little square. So I'm gonna be then dividing that by 10 to the first. So that becomes 10 to the 99th minus one more, which is 10 to the 98th power. So the square, little square becomes 10 to the 98th and the medium one becomes, right now becomes 10 to the 99th. All right, so that's the idea there as you're moving there. Going back to our big picture, we saw this was because of how it was set to begin with. This small one becomes times 10 to get to the medium one and this medium one becomes times 10 to get to the larger one. So to go the other direction becomes a divided by 10 or a divided by 10 there. And that's your idea. Let's take a look at the third activity. It wants us to complete this table to explore the patterns and the exponents when multiplying powers of 10. You can skip a single box on the table, but if you do, be prepared to explain why you skipped it, which is gonna be here. Which one are you gonna skip and why? So let's take a look here. Expression 10 squared times 10 to the third expanded out as two tens, three tens, combining two plus three gets you five, you get the idea. So expanded, we're gonna do 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. That's my group of four. And that's gonna be times 10, 10, 10, my group of three. And so we're gonna combine it together to end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tens. Okay. Next one, I have ten, four, four tens. One, two, three, four, all multiply together. Then I have four more. One, two, three, four, all together. Add those up and we have a total of eight. Here, I can see I have a group of three. So that's 10 to the third times a group of one, two, three, four, five, 10 to the fifth. Adding exponents up because the bases are the same. Three plus five is eight. Here, 10 to the 18th times 10 to the 23rd. I do not wanna write all that out there. So I'm gonna skip this part right there. That's too many tens to put in that box. But I can combine 18 plus 23 equals 41. So I definitely chose to skip that one there. And that's because there was just too many tens to write. It was gonna take too long. No reason to do that. So use the patterns you found in the table to rewrite 10n times 10 to the m as an equivalent expression with a single exponent like 10 to something. So based upon the pattern, we're gonna follow the rule we saw at the beginning here. And we would say that our pattern is gonna be, our, is gonna be 10 times n plus m. Okay, so that's gonna be the pattern that we see there again and again. Using that rule, write 10 to the fourth times 10 zero with a single exponent. All right, so using the rule, we would say it's 10 to the four plus zero. Well, what is four plus zero? Well, it's still four. 
so nothing really changes there. So what does that tell us about the 10 to the zero power? If I'm starting with 10 to the fourth, let's back up over here, times 10 to the zero, and I go through all this step and I still end up with 10 to the fourth, so here and here, what could this be that would let me still have there? Well, if I had a number like seven, seven times what number is gonna get you seven? We would say, uh, that's gonna be one. And while that's true, what does that tell us about 10 to the zero power? It means that 10 to the zero power is equal to one. And that's actually, we said it the other day before, that it's gonna be true for anything. Any number to the zero power is gonna be one. So 738 to the zero power is gonna be equal to, you got it, one. Okay, so just keep that in mind. There. There's no change to the number there. One more problem here before we get to our summary. It says the state of Georgia has roughly 10 to the seventh human residents. Each human has 10 to the 13th bacteria cells. So let's multiply 10 to the 13th bacteria cells in their digestive tract. How many are there in all the humans in Georgia? Again, the same bases. So the base stays the same. And we can add the exponents. 7 plus 13 is 20. And we can leave it just like that. Okay, so in this lesson, what we developed basically is a rule for multiplying powers of 10. Multiplying powers of 10 corresponds to adding the exponents together. And that was really the idea there and what we were doing. All right, so take a moment then to work on your homework, pause in the video, and then you can come back and we can check that together in just a moment. All right, here we go. Homework time for unit math eight, unit seven, lesson two. Okay, we have the same bases. So we're gonna combine the exponents. Three plus nine is 12, which is 10 to the 12th power. Same bases, let's go ahead and put a one right there. So it's implied. And let's combine the exponents. One plus four is five. Here again, same bases. 10 plus seven is 17. D, same basis, 10, and three plus three is six, right? The early addition here, the answer key showed a nine, that would be incorrect, so three plus three is six. Again, show your work and you'll be fine. This one here is a base of 10, adding the exponents, five plus 12 is 17. Here we have 10, 10, and 10, all the bases are the same, no problem. Let's add up what we have on the exponents, six plus six is 12, plus six is 18, and we are set to go there. Number two, a large rectangular swimming pool is a thousand feet long, it is a hundred feet wide, got that, and it happens to be 10 feet deep, 10 feet deep, okay? So drawing out there like so, like this, okay? Got it. Pool is filled to the top with water. What is the area of the surface of the water in the pool? The surface is gonna be this part right there, which is an area of 100 times, uh, uh, 1,000, sorry, whatever, and times 100. And 1,000 times 100 is gonna be 100,000. Again, just look at your zeros, one, two, three, four, five, put them together. How much water does a pool hold? Well, we take the surface area, the area of the base, we multiply that by the height, which is 10. So that becomes 1 million. Okay. Now express your answer to previous two questions with the power of 10. Okay. Well, 100,000 is the same as 10. And what we're going to think about here is how many zeros are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 zeros, which makes this one 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zero power. And that's expression with base 10. Number three, another unit root two thing, doing some scale factors. This triangle ABC is here. It says triangle DEF is similar. So DEF is similar. So maybe we could draw it right here if we chose to, okay? DEF, D-E-F, got it. All right, length EF is five centimeters. What are the lengths of sides DE and DF? So let's take a look at what is the scale factor that's taking place here. 
to go from a 10 to a 5. Again, that's 10 times what scale factor can get you to 5. If you want to make it an X and solve for X, you could do that. Or if you recognize quickly what that is, you're fine too. So if I divide both sides by 10, I get 5 over 2, which equals what? Equals 1 half. So our scale factor is a half. So let's take a look at this one. 8 times 1 half is going to be equal to 4. So that becomes the length of df. df, oops, df equals 4. For 6, we have 6 times 1 half, which equals 3. So the length of ed, or de, whatever you want to call it, is equal to 3. All right, so that's our scale factor is a half, and how we solve what that's going to be. All right, let's take a look at your last problem for the day, number four. Let's also review from unit three. It says Elena and Jada are distributing flyers uh, for different advertising companies. Elena gets paid 65 cents for every 10 flyers she distributes. Jada gets 75 for every 12. Draw graphs in the coordinate plan representing the total amount of each of them earned. Why? So why for the earnings? So our money is going to be here after flyers x here. So we have money on this side, flyers on this side. And see who got paid the most after 14 flyers. So we can go flyers and do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Perfect. And we can count this off by 10s. If I do by 5s, I run out of space. So I'm going to do 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. And so we know, first of all, for Elena, that she's 65 for every 10. So Elena's going to go for 10 flyers. She gets paid 65 cents. We'll put an E right there for Elena. And then for Jada, she gets 75 cents for 12. So here's 12, and we'll go up to 75 cents right there. And that is going to be Jada right there. Now to see what happens here at our magic line of... 14. We're trying to see who ends up with the most money at the finish line of 14. Just a random number number there. So we would take our ruler. We're going to start at the origin. We'll start at the origin and go through the point E for Elena. And have her go through the 14. And then we're going to go origin through Jada. And there's Jada. All right, so who has more money at the 14th flyer? It's gonna be this one right there, which matches the one for Elena. So really tight little squeeze there to make that work, but it does work out so Elena actually is making more for each flyer. All right, that's it for today. Have a great one and we will see you next time.